just want to work within their very narrow margin that separates Republicans from Democrats. Now, that's a big issue in Florida because they don't have a state income tax. So they rely pretty heavily on sales tax, on property taxes. So what would you do with that lost revenue that they're currently getting on property taxes with that exemption? Well, property tax in Florida found, uh, funds the, the counties and municipalities. We also have a 6% sales uh, state sales tax. The state collects 6% at every dollar. Uh, my plan is to cut the state budget by 30%, and then when we do, we can actually reallocate approximately two cents out of that sales tax revenue to the county. So it's revenue neutral for the county. So there's mm -hmm. plenty of money for, for the local services, police, fire, schools, roads. Uh, but yet uh, everybody in Florida has on average an extra $200 in their pocket every month. So that's, uh, that's real economic stimulus, the free market way. That's great. So that's some pocketbook issues. Now you're of course running as a libertarian. You've been an activist on some civil liberties issues, notably uh, the TSA back in 2011, Real ID. Give us uh, your take on some of the civil liberties issues that confront Flor Floridians that you would uh, stand up for. Well, they're the same issues that are confronting uh, people all across the U.S., uh, having to do with uh, the decimation of our Bill of Rights, the First, Second, Fourth, Fifth Amendments uh, across the board. And uh, I've long been a, a proponent of this. Uh, one of the things that I intend to do is uh, to ensure that uh, any usurpation of power uh, by the federal government is nullified here in uh, Florida under the 10th Amendment to the United States Constitution. And we're going to do that on uh, both a civil liberties basis and an economic basis. Uh, I actually have a plan called the Florida Interstate Commerce Act, uh, which will say that any business that operates exclusively within Florida's borders shall be immune from any federal regulation whatsoever. And we have the authority to do that under the Constitution. The Commerce Clause only applies to commerce between the states, not within. So we're going we're gonna to take full advantage of that. Well, that'd be excellent. Now, you are very active, not just in speaking out against TSA abuses, but at the same time here in Texas that we had the House unanimously approve a measure to stop the criminal and sexual molestation of people, especially children. That was passed in our House, and then they came out and got the Senate to pull back on it, threatening essentially to turn Texas into a no-fly zone. That's the way they stopped us here. You were active at the very same time in 2011 there in Florida. That's right. Uh, I uh, called out as the chairman of the Libertarian Party of Florida, I called out to all of 67 uh, Florida sheriffs uh, to begin making arrests on TSA agents who were uh, either engaging in sexual, uh, sexual molestation of passengers or violating the, the Fourth Amendment rights of passengers, uh, illegal searches and seizures uh, without uh, warrant, without probable cause. And uh, of course, uh, though I got uh, uh, some secret support from a couple of those sheriffs. Uh, no one would go out on record against the TSA. And it, it's a real shame because our constitutional sheriffs and our all of our uh, elected officials that uh, swear to uphold the Constitution are falling down on the job and they're, uh, they're failing to uphold their oath. That's where I think we can have a lot of effect. People believe they can only affect change by sending someone to Washington. I think the real change is going to come if we elect strong patriotic leaders like you who will stand against federal tyranny, stand for the Bill of Rights. I think that's where we need to check them. There's a lot of power that is not being used at the state level, at the local level, as you just mentioned, with the sheriffs. And I'll just add this to uh, Mr. Wiley, that at the time that was happening, we learned in uh, a lawsuit by John Corbett, who's an anti-TSA activist, he discovered as part of his uh, recovery that the TSA, actually in their internal documents in 2011, as they were threatening to turn Texas into a no-fly zone, as you were fighting them in Texas, they said there was no terrorist threat against airports or airplanes. That accidentally got published on uh, the federal website in an unredacted version. Then they put the redacted version up. So it's kind of interesting to see what they didn't want us to see in that. Well, thank you so Yes, go ahead. It's not surprising, it's not surprising that that happens because, uh, you know, a lot of this is geared towards uh, conditioning the people to uh, accept a, a slow form of tyranny. And uh, that's something that here in Florida uh, we're fighting against. Any final comments that you would like to uh, tell the voters who are one week away from the election? Well, uh, if you want someone who's honest uh, in the uh, governor's mansion, if you want to get governor, uh, government out of your wallet, out of your bedroom, out of your body and out of your business, I'm your guy. Thank you very much, Adrian Wiley, Libertarian candidate for governor in Florida, polling very strong now. What's your latest polling? Uh, we actually have internal polling data that uh, puts me very close to 20% at this point. So it's going to be wow. uh, real interesting to see what happens uh, next Tuesday. Well, I hope people will vote for real change instead of the lesser of two evils.
there's a very little difference, especially in Florida. It really underscores how similar the choices that they offer us each time are, especially in Florida. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, David. Take care. Thank you. And again, I would underscore that our election coverage beginning next Monday with pre-election coverage and the live election coverage that we're going to have election night on Tuesday, November 4th, it's going to be a little bit different, of course, than what you're going to see in mainstream media. We're going to look at the issues. We're going to look at whether or not these issues are going to be affected for the better or for the worse, depending on which party is in power. And we're going to look at ballot issues state by state. So it's not just going to be a Republican versus Democrat uh, horse race type of coverage. Now, that live election coverage on Monday and Tuesday is going to be on Prison Planet TV. If you're not a subscriber, please consider joining, supporting our operation with your funds. You can also share that with up to 11 people watching simultaneously, as well as having access to all of Alex Jones's documentaries. Again, that's going to be pre-election coverage 7 to 10, that's Central Time next Monday, and 6 to 10 p.m. on election night Tuesday. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.